This is task 2a part 3 where we're going to look at creating the print button. First of all we need a shape so if we go to insert now the shapes normally appear straight off but because I've got my screen reduced it's under illustrations and then shapes and I'm just going to go for a straightforward rectangle and this is going to be my print button here. I'm quite happy with the blue colour. We can change it if you want. You can change its style if you want. Make it more 3D looking. And I'm going to add some text to that. And we're told that it needs to be print the APR. And what we'll do is we'll make that text centred. And if we make it a bit bigger as well. There we go. That's that bit created. Now what we now need is a macro that's going to print and we're going to assign that macro to the button. Before I start I'm just going to check my page layout and you can see that it's not printing the grid lines or headings. I'm actually going to change that to be printed because when we print it we want to remove the grid lines and headings. So I want that option ticked so that when I record the macro it will actually remove them. So. I'm going to make sure I'm clicked somewhere outside of the model completely. We'll go to the developer ribbon and I'll click on record macro. Uh, now I'm going to call my macro print APR, it seems sensible. Click on OK and now everything that I do now is being recorded. So the first thing we want to do is select the area that we're going to print, which is going to be that area here. Within our page layout we want to make sure that we're not printing grid lines and that we're not printing headings. I'm then going to go to the print option and we can see here that it's printing an active sheet at the moment. I don't want it to do that, I want it to print my selection, so I'll change that to selection. And I want it to fit sheets onto one page. So I'm going to just select that option there. Now it wasn't selected so I'm going to unselect it and then select it so that it will put that in for definite. Now at the moment it's printing to my laser printer. Now if I'm just testing I'll just, I'll just change this to a PDF writer then it means that when I do actually print it it's not actually going to really print. And we'll click on print. Right, that's going to go through that process. I can just cancel this because I don't really need to print it. And now I need to click somewhere else on the model to deselect everything and that is the macro finished. So we'll go to developer button ribbon and click on stop recording. Now you're going to need to uh, annotate and explain what you've done. So each of those stages that you've gone through and those specific things that you did, you need to annotate. So you need to annotate how you recorded the macro and named it and annotate how you removed the grid lines and headings. Annotate how you selected the part of the uh, spreadsheet that you required. Annotate, it, annotate that you then selected to print only the se selection. And annotate to say that you chose to fit the sheet on one page and then how you remove the selection. What we can now do is assign that macro to the button. And again, you'll need to annotate to show that you assigned this macro to the button. So I'll assign, assign print APR and that now means that whenever I click on print APR it will go through that process. Now look I can test it because it's printing to that printer that doesn't matter. When I save my workbook we need to save it as a macro enabled workbook. So you'll see here that what I'm going to do is change this instead of being an Excel workbook to be an Excel macro enabled workbook. Uh, we'll give it a new name at this point because it makes sense to do a new name. There we go. Now you've also got to annotate the code that's been set up. You may not have to, you may get away with it. It depends on what the mark scheme says and what the mark scheme looks like. So if we go to macros and then we click on edit, we can see the code that's there. Now there's rather a lot of it. But most of it doesn't actually do anything. Most of it is just repeating what's been done. The things that matter are this. Fit to pages wide equals one. And print headings and print guidelines, grid lines are false. So I'm going, to, I'm going to delete everything above that. And I'm going to delete everything 
up to that fits page is wide and tall and everything below it and we can see here it says application dot print communication equals true I'm going to get rid of all of these bits above here because they're just repeating themselves over and over again and we'll take it all the way up to there delete okay we've got a few little bits extra that here that aren't required so we'll just do that there now if we have a look at what we're annotating here is where we selected our range so you can annotate that and say that is the range that you selected here is where you select set the print headings and print grid lines to be false to be not printed here is where you set it to be one page tall one page wide to fit wide to fit on one page here is where you chose to print that selection and here is where you then click somewhere else to undo the selection so you just need to annotate that part and that's then this bit completed.